Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this Sunday, the transfiguration of our Lord. Just a few days before the season of Lent begins already. That's how we're celebrating Valentine's Day this year at Holy Cross. We are coming to Jesus and receiving his forgiveness as we begin our Lenten season. But today, transfiguration of our Lord. We'll hear in that precious word of God that Elijah is graciously received by the Lord, taken up into heaven. And, and Paul will encourage us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that he would not preach of himself. No, he would preach only of Jesus Christ. And then we will be there gathered with Peter, James, and John on that mountain of transfiguration, seeing our Lord glorified before us. But he can't stay on that mountain, nor can we. He must go down to Jerusalem to suffer, to die, to be crucified, dead and buried, and to be raised on the third day in all glory. It's a pleasure to welcome this morning Pastor David Fleming, the Executive Director of Spiritual Care for Doxology, a wonderful organization in the States that helps pastors be the best pastors they can be, and they even help Canadian pastors sometimes. I've, I've gone and participated in doxology. It's been a great joy, and uh, he will bring God's Word to us this morning for our sermon. So this morning, though, the order of service is the service of prayer and preaching, and you can find that in the hymnal on page 260. You may wish to mark that. And then our opening hymn is number 686. I invite you to stand as you're able.
service of prayer and pe- preaching on page 260. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now. The Old Testament reading is found in your pew Bible on page 356, where Elijah is graciously taken up by the Lord to heaven. The Old Testament reading for the Sunday of the Transfiguration of our Lord is from 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. 
the company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, Suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to the heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is found on page 1120 in your pew Bible, where Paul proclaims not himself, but Jesus Christ. The epistle reading is found in 2 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. Therefore, since we have such a hope, We are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. We invite the choir to sing the anthem. James. 
As you're able, please stand for the gospel reading. It's found on page 978 in your Pew Bible. The gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my Son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Be we speak the common responsory on 263. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. We confess the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn 810.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is uh, the gospel which you heard read from Mark chapter 9, especially these words from God the Father. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. This is our text. It's a joy to be with you here again at Holy Cross Lutheran Church. My beloved and I were here at Pastor Rogo's installation, and what, it was just such a joyful day. And you were all so friendly, and the food was good, and the singing was outstanding, and it was great. And we just had this weekend a retreat with the men, and uh, wow, we had a delightful time. The men here in this congregation are amazing. I imagine the women might be too, I don't know. But, <laughs> but it's a joy to be with you again. And on, on Transfiguration Sunday, this is like the pre-Easter of Easter. Here we are, we get to go up the mount with Peter, James, and John, Jesus' inner circle, and we get to see through this reading what they saw, a sight for our sore eyes and a beautiful word, comforting word, for our sore, battered ears. Our eyes have seen a lot of things that we would rather not have seen in our life. Some of you have seen wars and crimes and other rot like that. You've seen people sin against you. You've seen yourself sin and do things that you know you shouldn't have done and fail to do the good you should do. There's a lot that's wrong. There's a lot of beauty in the world too, of course, but there's a lot that we've seen that's ugly and awful and sinful and evil. And so Peter, James, and John invite us in up on this mount through the words of Mark given to Mark by Peter, no doubt, that there they were on the mountain. I do know in Luke's account, it does say that Jesus is praying there. I don't know if Peter, James, and John were into praying there yet. They will be. But there they were on the mount with Jesus. And all of a sudden, he starts shining with his divine light. He's always had this divine light. He is the eternal son of God, God of God and light of light, as we rightly sang it. He is the eternal son of the father. And he's now showing what he's always had but has hidden. He, this light, by the way, isn't like a spotlight shining on him or these lights shining on us. It, it was a light that emanated from himself. He is the light of the world, after all, the light no darkness can overcome. And why does he hide it? Why is it that we don't see this light all the time? Why didn't he show it all the time in his ministry on earth? Well, I think largely because when they see this light, uh, at least Peter and it seems James, James and John as well were frightened by it. They were not encouraged by it. Uh, this light from God made them remember their own sin and failure. And, and so our Lord Jesus in his earthly ministry hid this, his, the power of his divine nature. He hid it under his humble human flesh so that he'd be approachable. So you could come up to him and he could touch you and you, you wouldn't flee I don't know, I said at early service, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but that if the uh, statue of Jesus here shone like Jesus did on the Mount of Transfiguration, you would all be moving to the back pews or the narthex or out to your cars. You'd be scared to death. And, and so there they are, seeing Jesus shine his, in his divine glory. And there with him is Moses, and Elijah, oh, you're getting a promising preview of your future here. You're, you're getting a glimpse of what it's going to be like forever in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come when we'll be fully alive, thank you, 
and we will be full of joy, talking with Jesus, basking in his divine light, light that fills all the kingdom of God. And don't you love it? Peter knows it's Moses and Elijah without any name tags or anything. We'll know each other. We're going to know each other's name. Ever had that awful thing where you forget the name of someone? I forgot Pastor Rogo's name yesterday. I know Pastor Rogo. I just, I don't know, I think I was tired, but I just could not remember. Maybe it's early dementia. Regardless, when we get to the eternal kingdom, we'll know each other. We'll know each other. You'll know your mom and dad if, if they were in Christ and are free. They'll, you'll know each other. You'll know names. You'll know Moses and Elijah. And of course, you'll know Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And they'll know you. We're together in this one body of Christ. It's a beautiful thing. When we get to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, I guarantee you there's not one of us that's going to go, hey, could we go back? You know, there's like a video game I want to finish. Um, or I want to go back and do a little more work on something. We're not. No, no, no. We're going to be like Peter. Hey, let's stay here. Let, let me build three shelters, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Of course, Peter lets us know a true mark. He has no idea what he's saying. He's scared to death. So he's just blabbing on. Some of us do, and we're scared. And it is then that the Father envelops them with this cloud, which is not like the cloudy days we had through, what, January? Was it it, um, in Grand Rapids? And I think here, too, you hardly had any sunlight. Right? It was dismal and gray. I was so happy for the sunlight the last couple days. It was delightful. No, this, this cloud was not like those clouds. This cloud was the cloud of the Father's divine presence, God's glory, like what filled the tabernacle and the temple and, and made it so the priests couldn't do any work because God was there to bless them and the people. And, and that pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, it was that cloud, that Shekinah, that cloud of glory that enveloped Peter, James, and John and interrupted Peter's little idea about building some tents to hang out there on the mountain and not leave. And then the father said really important words. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Hear him. By the way, don't... That little last part, listen to him, hear him. This is the unique thing about the transfiguration from the baptism of Jesus. And it is actually the point of this entire vision. Listen to Jesus. He knows what he's talking about. He will never lie to you. He tells you the truth. And why was this the important message to say as they stand on the Mount of Transfiguration and view Jesus in his glory? Well, just before this, Jesus had taken the only opinion poll of his ministry. Who do people say that I am? And they said, oh, Elijah, uh, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. And then Jesus said, what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter, you remember, said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus said, right on, Peter. He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. You didn't figure it out, Peter. But my father who is in heaven. And then now that they know that Jesus is true God and true man, come in our flesh to save us, the Christ, the Messiah. Then Jesus explains, now... We need to head to Jerusalem where my people will reject me and the Roman government will reject me and I will be uh, mistreated and mocked and shamed and crucified and on the third day rise from the dead. And you remember Peter tried to stop Jesus. He interrupted him. No, no, no. 
This cannot happen to you, Jesus. Not my Jesus. I love you. I'm not going to let this happen. You know, this is a good human instinct in a way, but it is also completely wrong-headed in another way. Jesus knows what he's doing, and Peter should listen to Jesus. So the father brings Peter, James, and John with Jesus up on this mount, and he lets them know, hey, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. Listen to him, Peter. He knows what he's talking about. He knows that this mount is to encourage you, to give you a picture of what's coming forever through his resurrection from the dead. But between here and there, it's going to get rough. You're going to go down from this mount. You're going to meet a demon-possessed boy and and you're, then you're going to go head on over to Jerusalem and Jesus is going to be rejected and mocked and insulted and arrested and scourged and spit on. A crown of thorns will be pressed into his head. Nails will fasten him to the tree at Golgotha. And on that mount, he will be damned by the Father because he's me and you and all our sin and he will die in our place and his stone-cold, dead body will be put in a grave, and he will break out of that grave and crush death forever. Friends, we need Jesus to do this. We need him to pay for all our sin. We need him to conquer death. We need him to crush Satan, and he had to do it this way, through his battle on the cross, all alone, doing it for us, and that's why we're on the Mount of Transfiguration, to look at what's coming after that and to know as we go through all of that, Jesus knows what he's saying. There's one other place where God the Father said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You remember that at, his, at Jesus' baptism. That was about three years before. And there as Jesus stood in the kind of muddy, shallow little Jordan River. Uh, Jesus, well, you remember, John the Baptist tried to prevent him, like Peter. He said, no, 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 I can't baptize you. You should baptize me. And Jesus said, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. What did Jesus mean? that he had to stand there as the Lamb of God, taking away the sin of the world. He had to stand there like all of us sinners have stood in baptism. Only his baptism is the exact opposite of ours. At your baptism, your sin was washed away, washed into the water, if you will. At Jesus' baptism, all the sin that's in the water is washed onto him. The whole penalty for the sin of the whole world is put on him there. He becomes our substitute. He puts on our human flesh and, and fights on our behalf. That's why Satan attacks. You'll hear that next Sunday in the gospel. And, and that's why he heads to the cross to die, to pay our full debt. And, and you know... Jesus' beautiful shining garment that we see on the Mount of Transfiguration as this light emanates from himself. Do you realize at your baptism, that garment was put on you? Paul says in Galatians 3, 10, 27, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You wear Jesus. You shine with divine glory. You are covered with this beauty of Jesus. And what's the Father say about you? Oh, you're my beloved daughter, you're my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Now I, I think that most of us then would think, well, hey, if God's pleased with me, as he is through Jesus, then shouldn't my life be kind of easy? Shouldn't people that, you know, kind of lumber out of bed on a cold Sunday morning and hustle over to Holy Cross and sit in these pews and listen to a guy yap on, shouldn't we, shouldn't we, like, 
have easier lives than the people that don't do all this. But it's not the way it is in the kingdom of God. Moses and Elijah suffered a great deal in their life for the good news of Jesus. Moses never got to the promised land until now, by the way. And Elijah, he had some horrid days where Jesus went and comforted him. You have tough days too. And there are a lot of things we'd like to have different. But don't miss what we have. We have a Savior who came down from this eternal glory willingly to die in our place, to rise in our place, to open for us eternal life. And he does not avoid going down from this mountain. He stays by our side upon the plain with his good gifts and spirit. And so in the holy work he gives you to do as a as a daughter or son, as a husband or wife, as a neighbor, as a worker, as a grandparent, as a kid. Uh, uh, he goes with us in that holy work, and though it looks kind of boring and ordinary, it actually is the kingdom of God in action, delivering uh, God's good gifts to the people he gives you to serve. And he goes with you. Don't you love it? Jesus had this divine glory that Peter never wanted to leave. But he leaves it for you. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all our understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We invite the choir forward for another anthem. Please be seated. announcements this morning. Um, if you haven't yet uh, filled out the friendship pads in the pews, please do so to let us know of your presence here with us this morning. Uh, special thanks be to God for Pastor David Fleming being with us, our, our neighbor from five hours down the road in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, a joy for us to receive God's word uh, from you this morning. Thank you. And Already on Wednesday, Lent begins, so uh, please join us at 1.30 or 7 p.m. And also during Lent, we will have soup and bun suppers at 6 p.m. downstairs in the
green basement, so uh, please join us for that as well. And if you are a bit hungry, the youth are having a bake sale today, so be sure to buy some goodies on your way out um, as well today. We can use some of your smiling faces as greeters here at Holy Cross, and if you're willing and able to do so, there's a sign-up out in the narthex. You can also sp um, speak with Roz Kays about that as well if you have any questions about being a greeter here at Holy Cross. As you're able, I invite you to stand as we receive the offering forward. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, as your Son received just a few loaves of bread and fish and multiplied them to feed thousands, so receive our humble gifts that we bring before you this day and multiply them that more and more may take refuge in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with prayer on page 265. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, especially for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Cartago, Costa Rica, and for Pastor Edmundo, and for the proclamation of the gospel to the ends of the earth and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation and for all nations, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and in thanksgiving for the safe return of our mission team from Costa Rica. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, especially in thanksgiving that Bonnie Oaks is home again from hospital. For Pastor Astley, who had a setback with his knee. For Dan Marshall, Deb Hutflutz, Jenny Block, Linda Ebel, and Matthew Benjamin. And for those who mourn, especially the families of Sigrid Bakerman and Darren Millen, whose funerals were this past week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for families, that parents would teach the faith to their children and that the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in all households. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully, make us co-heirs with the King in His glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. We sing the closing hymn 537.